What's going on guys? Welcome to episode 6 of the Feel for Football podcast. <laughs> I didn't realise how much of a tongue twister that was until I just said it, which is a bit crazy. I've done how many episodes. But today's episode is going to be very different. Usually, you know, five episodes ago, I guess, I'm giving you strategies that you can apply on a daily basis that can add value to your career and develop your mental skills. Today is all about perception. And so we've got two guests that we're going to speak to. But the reason why it's important to talk about perception is because everything we do is guided by what goes through our minds. And so a lot of the times we make decisions based on our perceptions on a particular scenario. And today's topic is dropping down a tier. Now, if you think about the concept of being dropped and dropping, like it has negative connotations to it all day long. You know, being dropped, you know, it's almost like an embarrassing factor, especially from um, a fan's perspective. But imagine what a player's perspective could be. Let's just say you got dropped from the team or whatever the scenario. But here we're talking about dropping down a tier. So whether you're dropping down a league, division, a skill level, or even just any other particular stage of football, The aim of this podcast is for you to change your perception on dropping down a tier and how you can use that experience to propel you in your career to greater heights. And so I'll be speaking to an agent to get the perspective of how the move has to go about and what kind of things need to be considered. We also speak to a player to get his perspective in terms of his journey and he's got an incredible story that we're going to speak to. But now I just want to kind of give you some bits to, to think about before we speak to everybody. And so... There's four cornerstones that you really want to consider when you're making a move and hopefully as we speak to the guest today that we will be able to identify some of those. Now one of the four cornerstones in terms of you making a move is the social climate and and that's how you are being perceived. Now a lot of this is due to how other people think of you which ultimately does not matter but it's good for you to consider these aspects so that there's nothing that can be said about you that can hurt you or even really get to the depths of your heart and soul. And what really matters is your ability to play games and develop yourself, which is the second cornerstone that we're talking about, which is career development. So will this move and will this club allow you to at least develop to get to the point where you're looking to get to in your career? Will you be able to improve? Will you be getting the game time? And what do I mean by that? Are you playing first team football? Are you playing regular minutes? Are you playing in the position that will showcase your talent? You know, so that's one of the things that you do want to consider. Another thing is the private element, and I'm talking about the people that are closest around you. So that could be family, could be children. How would they be settled in the environment that you're going to be moving and taking them into? So that's another element, and I'm sure that as we speak to the guests, we might hear some some of them mention some of those key aspects. And then the other one is just your personal life, essentially. When you make your move to the club, how are you keeping your mind engaged off the field? Are you, have you got um, access to hobbies? You know, maybe you might have some business endeavors or extracurricular activities. Identify the things that you can keep doing when you're off the field, because that's important too. And if you have all of these four cornerstones covered, that allows you to at least be able to keep your mind at ease and then put your all into developing and playing your game, because all the other aspects and areas of your life are covered. And that's enough for me speaking today and those four cornerstones you should definitely have those written down somewhere and whenever you do have to drop down a tier but even if you have to make a move and a transfer those four cornerstones are things that you should definitely consider and especially if you're dropping down a tier that social aspect is you really just knowing the very worst case scenario from outside sources but then combating it with what really matters because what other people think really doesn't matter. So let's speak to Phil Corklin, who was an agent, and get his perspective on how things go. So I'm here, I'm joined by agent Phil Corklin from Momentum Sports Management. How are you doing, my man? I'm good, thank you very much. How are you doing? Yeah, not too bad. You know, just trying to make the best out of um, being on lockdown, but it's slowly returning. Um, how's things been on your end? Because this is this is unprecedented for you. Um, how, how have you been handling this whole period and handling your clients during a, a, a pandemic? I think it's it's changed in the fact that normally in football season you have towards the end of the season you then have the playoffs and then players that are involved in playoffs they'll go on holiday later and then players not involved in the playoffs like the end of the season will come and they'll have a few holidays booked um, and you don't have too much contact time with them during that period because they're going on holiday and they want to get forget about football so you check in every so often just to make sure you know their schedule but then other than that like you wait until they come back from holiday and you can then tell them about transfer interest or contract situations that might be happening over the the summer period. 
So the weird thing now is that because there's no football, psychologically, everyone would expect that clubs then want to sign players and talk about contracts and talk about transfers that might happen. Um, but there's none of that. So then it's kind of a real waiting dead zone period where it's like, well, hang on a minute, everyone's so used to a certain structure and, yeah. and, and weekly plan as to what people do in football. And that's all been thrown out the window. So for us, it's been about communicating with football clubs, um, chief exec, chairman, directors of football managers to kind of know where they're at in terms of what their expectations are on our players. And then relaying that to our players and making sure they understand not only the, 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 the issues that are affecting football, but then the issues that are affecting the wider society. What kind of factors do you have to, or do you think a player should consider when, when they might have to make a move um, to maybe go down to, to do best for their career? I think the best examples probably are the 2018 England World Cup side that got to the semi-finals. I think a very, very large percentage of that group had either been on loan or started at a football league club. Um, so they might have been a player that started at Man United but went on loan to someone in the football league. Or it might have been Harry Maguire who started at Sheffield United and got a huge number of games under his belt before he moved to Hull and then moved on um, and is doing what he's doing now. So I think there's, for me, it's sometimes people look at it and they go, oh, I just want to play in the Premier League, I want to play for a big club. But it's not just about that. It's about um, even a, a, a study that I think Manchester City undertook when they were looking at the best pathway for their young players. And they found, again, that a huge percentage of players that have played in the Champions League at quarter-final stage had made their debut in the first team by the age of 17, which is a very young age, really. But what that means is that the exposure to playing men's football basically is a huge key indicator is the younger that you start, the more progress you'll make. Um, and I think that, for me, taking a step down, it's, it's not a step down, it's actually a step forward. Um, I feel like you've answered it already, but it would just be good to get it explicitly. But when do you think it's time for a player to make that decision? Because there almost is an argument whether you fight for your place in the team, keep working and try and pursue... But then there's time when it's like, okay, there's not much you can do now and, and the decision has to be made. When, when do you think is that crucial period of time where that decision should be made? I think it massively varies because I've been an agent for 13 years and in that time there's been a lot of different scenarios where the sweet spot of going, right, we need to get out here. It's been very different. So you could have a player at a top club who's 16 years old, he's been offered a scholarship, and they say, um, we've offered you a scholarship, which is two years from 16 to 18. However, if you get an offer, if you get a better offer elsewhere, then actually you can take that offer and we'll let you go to that club. So I had one player um, who did that. He was offered a two-year scholar and a one-year pro at another Premier League club. This other club then said, right, we'll let you go to that club. And then he ended up making his debut by 19 in the Premier League because he, we'd found the situation where we're like, if you've only been offered a scholarship, but you're saying, actually, we'll let you go if someone offers you better, yeah. then that club saying, actually, we like you, we'll play you, but you're probably not going to be one of our key players. So for him, at 16, it was the right time to leave. But then you might have other players that are physically mature-wise, maturity, a later developer. Um, and maturity isn't just about the kind of attitude they have. It's just in terms of their game, their their outlook on life. It could just be their football maturity as well. But physically, they could be later developers in terms of the height that they gain, the strength, um, the athleticism. And sometimes to stay in at a bigger club for longer, that might be right for them because they're getting the, the facilities, they're getting the coaching, they're getting the support that they need to kind of flourish. So there's lots of kind of football knowledge and little bits that you kind of need to read situations, but it's always a very fluid situation, I think. Yeah, absolutely. So thank you for passing us on to Jacob, who we'll be speaking to later. And thank you for that connection there as well. I appreciate that, Phil. Take care, my man. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And so I'm joined here by Jacob Brown from Barnsley, Barnsley Striker. How are you doing, my man? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Thanks for having me. I'll be honest, this is our second time of doing this. <laughs> the first time I didn't record it, unfortunately. So I appreciate you offering your time again. Much appreciated. 
You've been training today? Yeah, yeah. I've, I've just got back uh, about 20 minutes ago. Um, we did a training game today, so my legs are feeling it. I'm going to be resting today. Is that, like, how, how um, long have you been back in the game? Because we know football's been out for a, a while now. How, how long have you been back? Uh, well, we've only been, we've been training for about a week and a half now. Um, the last two days have been contact training, so it's more like mini games and stuff like that. And obviously today was the first like full-size game that we've done. And then we've got, we've got a friend coming up next week. Um, but I think because it's like we've only been back a short period of time, it's, it's quite tiring. It feels like pre-season again. But moving on to the topic now, just the whole concept of you making moves and you know sometimes going down a tier and the whole concept of you using that experience to propel you in your career, you, you are someone that kind of embodies that, you know, because you started off in academy football and I was thinking about it a little bit more today, just the life of academy football when you talk to your friends and you're almost like a mini young celebrity amongst your friends. And then you got released um, as a teenager, you know, and I was just thinking about the effects of that and how sometimes you might not even want people to know and just the way that the whole social environment works, like, how did you even handle that experience looking back? Yeah, well, it's funny you say that. I was talking to my um, girlfriend about that the other day. When I was younger in it, uh, I was at Sheffield Wednesday. And um, when I was there, I, I, obviously I was only young, so I was nowhere near the first team. But I, I felt like I was like a professional footballer sort yeah. of thing. And um, all my friends, like when I was at school, they, I sort of like felt they like looked up to me a bit because I was in that situation. And then... I remember when I got released, obviously I, I was good, but one of the first things that I thought was like, oh, I'm going to have to like, tell everyone at school and stuff that I'm, I'm not playing for them anymore. So it, like, loads of thoughts come into your head, but that, not, none of that really matters in the end. It, it's all about you. But when you're that young and like, you think a lot about other people um, and what they think of you, um, I was sort of like, I felt like I'd let people down. Like, obviously, yeah. they all thought, oh, he's going to be like, a professional footballer and, and all of that. Um, but yeah, I think... It, things like that happen in in life, and you just got to you've got to deal with. It. You have to accept it that it's happened, but um, not dwell on it too much, and then just use that and use it as like motivation. So I can like when I was younger, I was like right, I'm gonna try my hardest, work hard, and hopefully prove them wrong in the future. So what did you do from there? Because you went into non-league football. You know. You know after you, please. Uh, so after I got released, I um, I had the chance of going. I was only 14 at the time. I had a chance of going on trial at other clubs that were around the area. Um, but I think at the time I was like I was quite down um, about myself, and I just wanted to be with my friends, enjoy my football. So I sort of put that on the on the back burner for a bit, and was playing Sunday league and, and really enjoying my time um, playing football there. And then when that team like folded because it was under 18s, they weren't going any further. Uh, that's when I went to Geisley um, for non-league. Um, and like I said to you before, a lot of my friends went to Halifax um, and I decided to like leave all of them because it would have been easy to just go with them yeah. um, have like a mess about and stuff like that. But I thought I wanted to really focus on football and my education. So that's when I went to Geisley. Um, had to get like a train and a bus like quite a while away to get there. Um, so I think for me, looking back at that, I'm really glad that I did that um, so that I could just focus on myself get enjoying like just working on myself, playing football in a new environment with new people that I've not met. Um, so that sort of tested myself a bit. Mm. Um, but then also the school as well, meeting new people. Uh, it was good to just like have a different uh, environment for a while. And what you said yesterday was that you, your whole trip to Geisley was like potentially a three hour trip. You know, so that shows a level of commitment that you was you was making in in terms of you just playing football, enjoying it, but also, as time goes on, you had to keep yourself motivated because I'm sure a three hour trip as a as a youngster becomes a little bit like, not demotivating, but become become a little bit monotonous, and maybe you might just think there could be a simpler solution for you to play locally, but you kept at it, and that says a lot about you as a person. Yeah, you're right. Obviously. Um, Halifax was literally I could have probably walked to the to the ground to train um, but like I say obviously when it's, you've had a long day and I'm getting a train into Leeds to then get a train back to Halifax yeah. um, it, it's quite long and say if you've had a bad day you're just thinking oh like this is it's getting a bit a bit long but obviously you just got to stick at it and you just got to think about your end goal and, and why you're doing it in the first place yeah. um, which is like what kept me motivated and then luckily I, I got opportunities 
in the future from being at Geisley, um, and that's got me to where I am now. So we can't glance over the fact that you have almost have experience in every position on the pitch, <laughs> essentially. So when you was at Sheffield United, you was playing as a centre-back, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, at Sheffield Wednesday, sorry, I, I was at, uh, sorry. Yeah, I was a centre back then. But yes. before when I was before I was at Sheffield Wednesday, um, when I first I was obviously just a youngster, I was playing up front. But because I was like taller than a lot of the kids my age, that's why they wanted me to be a centre back. Okay. So that's when I played centre back for about five, six years. Right. And then fast forward to Geisley, I believe it, you was moving forward on the pitch, you was a centre mid, right? Yeah, I went centre mid then. Yes. Okay. And then just so I'm not getting you to repeat yourself, because we can we can focus on some other elements. You then had a friendly that kind of changed things for you in, in the, the the course of the direction of your career. Could you talk to to us about that? Yeah, well, that was like the the massive point that changed um, what was happening in my life. So um, I, we had a friendly against Barnsley, um, and obviously I knew they were a professional club, and it was a uh, like looking at Barnsley, they they like to produce young players and get them into the first team so I knew it would be a great opportunity and um, that's probably one of the best games I had um, for, for guys at the time and I started centre mid, I ended up playing right mid and up front in the same game, yeah. we won 2-1 and I'd scored both the goals um, so I was, like, I was happy with myself after the game and then one of the coaches came in and, and he said that he wanted me to go on trial so obviously like, straight away I just knew that I, was, I had an opportunity to get back into professional football and then I just took the opportunity. Mm. Congratulations on that because, you know, like, let's just say you wasn't consistent going to Geisley and, and you gave up at some point, you might not have had that opportunity, you know, and yeah. it was you playing in, in an amateur or um, in non-league football that gave you that opportunity. So it's almost a message that you keep going because you don't know who's going to be watching, but also you don't know when things can change for you. Yeah. So that that says a lot about you. So you, you know you got signed to Barnsley, but as I was saying to you the other day, like that you know you start dreaming. You start dreaming of you playing in front of the crowd. You start imagining you being in in a in a competitive space, League One at the time, and it didn't quite work out for you again. So it's almost a bit of a knock where you had to go on loan. But in retrospect, you said that this loan was quite important for you. Yeah, definitely. I think um, for me and I think for any young player, um, a loan is probably the, the best experience you can get unless you're obviously playing in your own first team week in, week out. A loan is the best thing you can do because you, you're going to be playing men's football um, and getting the experience you need to then get into your own first team. But it's not um, like plain sailing and for me it definitely wasn't either. Um, so when I, when I first went on loan to Chesterfield, everything happened like quite fast because it was on deadline day. Um, and I, I couldn't leave until Barnsley had brought another striker in, which was Ollie McBurney yeah. um, at the time. And then when he came in, my agents had sorted the move to Chesterfield. <clears throat> and then when I went, obviously thinking you, you're dropping down a level, you think, oh, you're going to be you're going to be playing every week. Um, so I was like looking forward to that. I weren't being overconfident, but I just sort of expected that I would be playing. Um, but I had like a reality check when I went there. Um, I didn't play for like I think four or five games and then uh, I managed to start a game and I, I then played like a lot of the games after then um, but it was just like the whole experience um, was something that I'd, I'd recommend to any young player that can't like get straight into their team. You're at a point when that happens of your confidence being almost uh, tarnished in some ways because when you are that lone player sometimes you're looked at as that that player that people will look to to, to bring that edge of competitiveness or uh, a, a skill level that's maybe a bit superior. So, in retrospect, like, how did you feel going, let's just say, down now, essentially the whole concept of this, and still not getting the game time? How were you able to kind of combat that? I remember you said that there was a few challenges you had as well. Yeah. Well, I think um, looking back at it now, um, obviously, I'm dropping down a few levels to be playing, but I also see it as... I'm moving down, but I'm also moving up in the same sense yes. because I'd I'd not actually played much game time for Barnsley, so I, I couldn't really see myself as a, a Championship or League One player because I'd not I'd not been playing. So really, I'm still like an academy player. So then to be playing League Two, that's the highest level I've played at. Um, so obviously, I'm dropping down, but even 
as soon as I'm dropping down, I'm, I'm moving up and progressing myself. Even though I, I, didn't, I didn't do well whilst I was there, and unfortunately we did get relegated. I was a striker slash winger and I, I didn't score any goals. It, it's really tough um, because you start doubting yourself. Um, especially when I was younger, I was looking on social media after games. I don't know why, if I, if I knew I'd not played well, but you obviously, you just want to see what people are saying. And I, I got like a lot of negative comments, but um, I think, like I say, you have to look at that. And every week I just said to myself, right, I'm going to try and prove all, all the fans wrong and stuff like that. And maybe I, I didn't at the time, but I've definitely proved myself right and shown that now I can, I've can. i played in League One and then we got promoted and now I've played in the Championship that I definitely can play at that level um, and excel from them. Yeah, and speaking to you now, like I'm just take I'm really like soaking in what you're saying because, you know, it's quite valuable information there because in some ways when you're when you're getting yourself to that place where you want to be, or even we're playing at a higher level and kind of drop, the most important thing for, for a player, which I'm getting from you, is is just minutes in first team football. And I say that because you can then determine what you do within those minutes. You know, you could be someone that sets the league alight and then all of a sudden there's attention to you so it's really about even though it might be seen socially as a drop down it's it's a step and an opportunity to propel yourself again because you can make the most of the minutes that you can get yeah and i think i think as well a lot of um, young players they don't they, they feel a bit um like they feel a bit scared to to drop down because of like we said earlier about what people think about you um dropping down to a, to a lower league but if you think about twenty um, threes football, is like nothing like playing league league two or even playing conference. Like um, men's football is just completely different to the twenty threes and the academy game. So you're not really going to get no, even if you're scoring week in week out in the twenty threes, you, you're not really going to get noticed by anyone else. But if you're playing first team football, whether it's conference, league two, league one, you you're going to get noticed by a lot more people because there's first team clubs are watching them games so it's definitely like something i'd recommend to young players yeah and i appreciate that it's good to get your perspective as well now even just looking more on on the positive now like you you persisted you've gone through trials and now you're playing in what some will call one one of the second best leagues in the world you know how is that how was the jump how was the differences what what's kind of the difference in skill level from non-league football maybe league one to the champ yeah, the skill level is like a massive jump. Um, I think if you look at some of the players, a lot of them have either, they've just been relegated from the Premier League, so they're in essence Premier League players. And then you've got a lot of players that have played in the Championship um, for a number of seasons. So for us, uh, a lot of uh, Barnsley especially, like it's our first season in the Championship and it's, it's all new to us. Um, it's hard to cope with because everyone it's, they're all so sharp and you don't get as much time on the ball as you would in, in League 1 or League 2 um, but I think like the best way of dealing with it is like just to try and adapt to it and you've got we all work hard in training to try and be sharper play the ball quicker and stuff like that but um, I think the best get, the best way is just getting experience in the games um, and luckily I've, I've played a lot of games this season so now I feel more experienced and you've done pretty well this season yeah, I've um I've got eight assists, so I've, I've got quite a lot, um, and I've I've got a couple of goals as well. But like I say, I've I want to get a few more goals, um, and obviously we've still got um, nine games left, I think. So my aim for that is to just try and get a few more goals and keep playing and doing well. Yeah, and you said that there's a there's a relegation battle at the moment, and you know with with your form and and what you can bring to your team, I'm hoping that you can you can get them out. Um, and I look forward to seeing that and hopefully the viewers as well will be watching and keeping staying tuned on that now there was something I was going to say oh yes so do you know people say I don't know if you've heard this before but they say that the championship is technically harder than the Prem I don't know if you've heard that I'm not going to get you to I'm not going to get you in trouble and say that but I'm just saying like you know it's a tough league yeah. one last thing what would you say is your goal as a player for your, for your career? My goal personally, throughout my career, I don't know when it would be, but my goal is to, to probably play in the Premier League, um, which I, I've said like to you before, it, it might seem a few years ago, I might say that to myself and think, right, you're just making unrealistic goals because I'd never even played in League One or the Championship. But then two years later, I've played in League Two, next season, League One, the season after the Championship. 
So I'm not saying I'm going to play in the Premier League next season, but there's no, there's nothing stopping me. I'm, I'm 22, um, so I've still got like a number of years ahead of me. If I keep working hard, then there's nothing stopping me from, from achieving that goal. I don't think. Yeah, lovely. Small steps, progressive steps. And are you English? As in, like, if you played international <laughs> football, you play for England. Yeah, well, I'm English. I can play for England. Um, my mum's Scottish, so I could also play for Scotland. And my dad's Jamaican. Right. So there's a few ways I could play international football, okay. hopefully one day. Yes, well, I look forward to that as well. Jacob, appreciate your time, my man. And Thanks. all the best. And hopefully we'll stay in touch for sure. Yeah, definitely. All right, take nice care, my man. Nice one. See ya.